Okay, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to dive in here and um, I'm going to just focus on the scope really quick. I want to show you how fast and how quickly you guys can make a really cool scope. So I know some of my 104 students are like working. If you look up though, if you get a chance, I mean, you can, I'll process this and you can take it with you, but I'm worried about some of you not watching the videos at home or whatever and just, you know, take the time just to look up for a little bit and try to follow with me. So I'm going to make a scope real quick, okay? I have a really base, simple cylinder shape here. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to create a couple other polygon shapes that I'm going to use, okay? I'm definitely going to use that guy. Um, and just to be safe, I'm going to create another couple, couple of cylinder shapes here, okay? Up. And let's see what other shape I might need. You know, let's get a sphere. A sphere is always <coughs> helpful to have. The reason I like having a sphere is a sphere makes a lens. Okay? So, um, let's dive in here. Let's start with, I'm going to make my scope, I'm going to make a knob for my scope really quick. Okay? So, to make my knob, I'm going to start with this guy real easy. And I'm, I'm thinking ahead. I know exactly what type of shapes that I'm going to do. I'm going to scale this guy down here and then take this guy here. I'm going to minimize them a little bit, bring this into here. I'm going to come up and I'm going to duplicate him because I'm going to use him as a second in a, in, a, in a second. I'm going to use him as part of the base part of the knob. I'm going to put that in here. I'm going to select this guy, go to vertices. Okay. And I'm going to select this. I'm going to bring it down here. I'm going to scale it inward a little bit like this. And then I'm going to come down this, scale it down a little bit more, bring it in a teeny bit. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to put, um, I mean, how much detail do you want to put on it? I can put, I could extrude every f facet on that end right there and make it look like it's a rubber knob. So why don't I do that really quick? Actually, that sounds like it could be pretty cool. Uh, what I could do, I could do a basic knob where I just do this. I just take this face here and um, the other shape underneath it's lined up, but look, I have one shape here. I can hit extrude, and I could pull this face out like this. See that? And I have a real simple basic knob. Okay. Oh, what did Phil do? I extruded. I didn't extrude the center face. So I want to come up here and get this locked in. So in this particular case, I don't have a face that lands right in the middle. The way that I could adjust that, if I come under the poly shapes here, is if it'll let me adjust the subdivisions here to about 21, which it won't. Because I already, what happened, why is it doing that, guys? Is that I already distorted the shapes, right? So what I'm going to do really quick is create another one. A little fast here. I'm going to bring it up here. And um, oh, come on. Let's get it up here now. I'm going to, real quick, I'm going to check it before I scale it down. Let's go to 21, and I want to see if I have a direct face coming off the middle. So I don't have one there. I think you have to be divisible by 4. Exactly. So I, was, I think I have to go watch. If I go to 22, I get it. See that? Here's the center line. Now I have a face right there that would fit as a knob. And so if I come down this way, I don't have a face. But as long as I have one on this side, that's fine. So now I'm going to take that shape. Scale it down really quick, bring it over here, place it in the middle. Let's get this lined up. It's feeling pretty good. Right there. Let's go to vertices. Touch these vertices. I'm going to bring them down. Say about there. I'm going to scale them in like so. Okay. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to make two different knobs. So I'm going to go ahead and select this entire thing. I'm going to group it. I'm going to duplicate it. Put one over here. This knob is going to have a little end that sticks out that might be... So let's find that center line. Center line be coming right down there. So I'll take that face. <coughs> I'm going to extrude it. Now you'll notice here the extrusion arrows come out matching a line to the angle of the face, right? If I want to pull it out, what I can do is pull it out and push it down. Or if I go to W, the move tool just allows me to sort of pull it out in the position that I want like that. Okay? There. I got a cool little 
knob detail, I'm going to take this, a little bit of detail here. I love detail. It adds a lot to a piece. So I'm going to scale this down a little bit. I notice my knob, that's okay, it's, it's all right there. I thought it was a little bit off. I'm going to bring this up a teeny bit, and I might duplicate it again. And I might put the center piece up on the top here. I'm going to scale it down. So I have a little knob, a little piece that goes like that, sits on the top here. Okay. Oops. There we go. So here I have one knob right there. That's pretty cool. I'm just going to take this part here in the middle. I'm going to scale it down a little bit. There we go. Okay, I'm going to group this now here. And I already have it grouped. I'm going to come over my outliner really quick. I'm going to type in knob. Okay, now I'm going to make a secondary knob for my rifle. Okay, this time, this one's a little bit bigger, which is cool. I want it to look a teeny bit different. Let's go to vertices. Grab some of these vertices. I'm going to pull them down really quick. And since this knob is a little bit different, I might scale these back out a little bit more. I'm going to come into face here. I'm going to select this whole row of faces right there. Okay, just by dragging a box over it, have them all selected. I'm going to go down under my mesh, make sure this is on off. Okay, I'm going to go to extrude. I don't know why it does that. It used to stay lined up. That looks really sloppy. That doesn't. That's about what I wanted was something like that. And then I can see if I can scale them up a little bit. But then it, when I scale them up, it changes the. That's just fine. I have that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to extrude that. Okay. I'm going to pull it out a little bit. Make it look like it has a little bit of a rubber grip on it. Scale it in. Scale a little bit this way. There. And I get the shape I wanted. Okay? So I have another knob shape there. Nice. Okay? Um, and then I'm going to take this shape here. It's a little blocky still. So I can make a quick adjustment on it. Um, just to make it look a little bit different. I'm going to say edit mesh insert edge loop here and then click here I'm going to click right here and then I'm going to go to faces all right I'm going to select all these faces down the middle here I'll look through make sure I'm all selected I'm just going to take my scale I'm going to scale them in a little bit you know what hold on one more time edit mesh um, insert edge loop I'm going to put another edge loop there and another one like that Let's go to faces. I'm going to select all these faces right here. And then I'm going to go to scale, scale them in a little bit like that. Okay? This makes it look a little different. <coughs> now I have the idea of grabbing some of the outside vertices as well. Right in here. And I'll grab these up a little bit like so. And do the same thing and line up on there. like the bottom row like that, bring them down, and then I might even expand these out just a little bit like that. Oops. Hit F, frames it back in my view, there we go. There, so now I have another cool little button here. <coughs> bring that down a little bit more. I'm going to come in, I'm going to group that. There, so now I have a knob too. Double click here. K and O B two. Okay, great. So now I'm going to use those on my gun in a second. I mean, on the on the rest of my scope here. So I'm going to start with this shape here. Um, I'm going to take advantage of doing a bully on here. I'm going to try to make a really cool shape that might be a protective element that goes around the outside of my my scope here. So let's say that's the internal part of my scope. I now duplicated that. Right. I'm going to scale that up a little bit like so. Okay. So now bear with me with what I'm going to do here. So I'm thinking ahead here. I'm going to take that shape and make an exterior shell. So I'm going to duplicate that, skillet inside itself a little bit like that. OK. 
Okay. I'm going to take a cube. I'm going to bring that up here. I'm going to use that. I'm going to bully on some of that off. And then I'm going to also take the same shape. I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to turn it this way. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale it down a little bit. And I'm going to squash it. And I'm going to get a cool little detail shape like that. I'm going to rotate this at like a 90. Not a 90. I meant like a little bit of a 30 or 40. I'm going to get that centered about there, and I'm going to duplicate it one time, hit Shift D again. Oh, it didn't do it. Let's try it again. Duplicate once, Shift D, and it repeats the duplication. I like that pattern of threes. I'm going to group them, move them over a little bit here. Okay. Actually, instead of to save myself time, I'm going to undo the group, and I'm going to combine them under mesh here because I'm going to do a boolean with that. So watch what I'm going to do here now. I'm going to take this. So I'm going to do three booleans here real quick. I'm going to come up with a really cool shape. I'm going to take this shape, bring it down. I'm going to basically dip it into that cube. And then I'm going to rotate it like this. Oops. Pull down shift like that. OK, I'm going to pull it up to about there. about there. I'm going to shorten the length of this a little bit more. Bring this back. <coughs> okay. Now watch. I, there's, here's the shape I'm going to keep, right? I'm going to take that shape and that shape first. Edit mesh. Boolean difference. I get that. I'm going to do that again to here. Hold on. I have a hot key on one of these. Let me cut it. Cut selected. There we go. Okay. Mesh. Boolean difference. Okay, and then I'm going to take that shape to that shape. Mesh, Boolean difference. See, now I have that really cool fitting shape there. But see what happened? The geometry doesn't like me. See how it got real jagged in there? You know why I did that? So I'm going to have to go back and fix that real quick here. It did that because I don't have enough subdivisions in here. So I'm going to come back under the shape here. But it's not going to let me do anything, so I'm going to just have to replace that part really quickly like this. It's funny. When you have to replace a part, sometimes you get like, oh, man, I don't want to have to replace it. It takes maybe two minutes. I get another cylinder shape up here. I get it centered about where it is. I'm going to scale it down. Zoom in on it. I'm going to get it in about the same position as the other cylinder shape. That's just fine. I'm going to delete this shape. No, you know what? Hold on. I'll use that for a second. I'm going to get it to about the same size as that. Okay. I'm going to move it over, get it to about the same length, save myself the time, get it to about there, right? I'm going to delete the old shape. Don't need that anymore. Take the new shape. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to punch up the subdivisions. I'm going to go ahead and jump up to about 35. You know what? I might even go 40 since I'm making these cuts in here. Oops. Oh, that's why I didn't. You know what? I did that because I stretched the vertices here. So let me just do it this way. Delete that shape. I'm not going to stretch the vertices. Now I'll add in 35 subdivisions. Okay. That's feeling, you know what? I think I agreed on 40. There. I have 40 now. I'm going to slide that over. Now I'm going to modify it. Select this, bring this to about there. And now I'm going to take that shape inside itself, duplicate it, scale it down, stretch it out like that. So touch here, touch here. Mesh Boolean difference. Okay. Touch that shape now, center the pivot, touch the cube. Okay. Mesh Boolean difference. And touch here, touch the combined, mesh, <coughs> Boolean difference. And now you'll see, notice the difference? It's not as bad. It held together a little bit more. Bugs me, I should increase the resolution a little bit more. But anyway, let, let's see. Let's just for right now, I'm not going to, oops. 
I'm just going to do the one bullion. I think I'm getting ahead of myself by putting too much detail in there. And what I might do is sometimes I've noticed cubes work a little bit better. Yeah, let me command Z real quick. I might try this real fast. This might give me a better feel. <coughs> Combine it. Let's try this one first, see what happens. I think the fact that I had a bullion oval, a round shape, inside a round shape is where Maya wasn't liking that. Because now when I look at this, that's pretty clean. It's not too bad on the geometry. And so what I'm going to do is I made that because that's going to be a little housing piece that's going to go on the outside of my scope right there. You see that? See how that adds a lot of detail to my scope piece? So now I'll keep making part of my scope. And bring this part out here. And this is how easy it is. Now I'm just going to take this guy. I'm going to duplicate him. I'm going to do this separate so I can assign it different textures without having to select faces. And bring this guy back here. I'm going to use that guy as a centerpiece. Okay. I'm going to duplicate an end piece here for each one, like this. I'm going to come here and get the vertices. I'm going to adjust the vertices down here, like so. Okay. Oops, I just put a hotkey on that by accident. So I'm going to take this piece, put it on that the cap there. Cap it off a little bit like that. Take this piece, duplicate it. Bring that in about here. Okay save myself some time, right? <coughs> you know what? I just had an idea about doing this. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull this shape down a little bit like that. And, and then I'm going to do a bullion because I want to have a lens in there for my scope, right? So let me enlarge this a little bit more for my glass piece. So I'll save myself a little bit of time here. And do this. First, I'm going to duplicate the shape, stick it inside here, scale it down a little bit like so. Okay? But the bullion, I'm going to bully on this into here. But before I do that, I'm going to duplicate the shape because I want to do a bullion inside this piece. So the lens will show. Does that make sense? I need to have a hole cut in both pieces. So I'm going to take this shape here, I'm going to duplicate it. Okay? Let me show you what I did. I just duplicated that piece. So I'm going to touch this on that piece on this. I'm going to say mesh boolean difference. Okay. See now this will fit over that end like that. And then I could put a lens piece in there. I'm going to touch this mesh boolean difference. Okay. Now I can use this and I can put this right over the edge like that. See that? Get a nice little detail or I could slide it. I might even keep it back here. And then I can put this one here and I can inverse it the opposite way, like so. Okay. And then to make my lens cap, I'm going to take my sphere here. I'm going to come down and then delete half of the ends of my sphere that I don't need. And go to edge. I don't even really need to do the edge on it, but I'm just going to do it anyway. Just out of habit, select the edge, put a mesh fill hole. Okay. And then bring this back down here. I'm going to rotate it. Put it 90 degrees. I'm going to drop this down here. Get this lined up. One thing that helps me line something up if I don't have it is I look for the center lines. 
like that center line's right there, center line here. So you can see if I move this piece just a little bit this way, like so, the center lines are lined up. Okay. So I'm going to get that piece. Then I need to do the same thing, bringing it down. The center lines here, the center lines there. So if I bring this down to about here, and I look at it and bring it up just a teeny bit more, right there, is lined up. So I have that benefit of it being lined up, and then it makes it easier to scale. Okay. So now I'm going to scale this in a little bit. And to make the lens, I'm basically going to flatten it, like so. Like that. Slide it into place. Okay. And now I have a cool little, if I click off of it, I have a cool little lens piece. And I have the beginnings of my scope. Okay. Save myself time. I'm going to take this piece, <coughs> this piece, this. I'm going to group them. I'm going to duplicate them. I'm going to use them down here on the other end. Okay. I'm going to rotate them over. Negative 180 degrees. Okay. Um, I'm going to make these a little bit larger, and I'm going to modify their shapes a little bit. No, maybe not too much larger. Okay. Now, I'm going to come in here. I created this guy right here, right? This guy's going to be my friend. I'm going to rotate this guy. I'm going to make a little soft piece where the eye would go on and attach. So I'm going to bring the shape over like this. I'm going to bring it down here so it's pretty squared up. I'm going to scale it down to about the size that it's going to start to come off as. Okay, and I need to add a lot more subdivisions to that. I'm going to go ahead and go into about 40 right now so it's nice and smooth. Okay. Now here's something that I do sometimes that really adds a lot of time as I stretch it so I can go in there and see the, the pieces that I need. Okay. Actually, I like that piece so much, I'm going to save that and use that for something else. I'm just going to put it over there right now. So I'm going to come down here and I go down into my faces. I'm going to delete this half of my object. I don't need that. Okay. I'm going to come down and bring that object down to here. Remember the lattice? I'm going to go up here. I'm going to put my Go into the animation submenu. I'm going to come down here under create deformers. Go to lattice. I should. I'm going to get up lattice. It's going to be about four by four by four. Hit apply. Close. And now I'm going to come on my lattice here, and I'm going to do this. I'm going to right click on it, lattice point, and I'm going to make that that shape. <coughs> Okay, now what happens when I saw what happened when I did that, when I turned that, it made it smaller. The distance from here to here is smaller. And so I don't like that. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm manually going to grab each one of these corners. I'm going to grab one out a little bit. I'm going to pull one down. I'm going to make a straight line. See that? There. So I have a nice little straight line. Bring this one down a little bit more because I'm picky. There we go. And that looks pretty cool like that. And But just to be, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to flare it out a little. Okay, you see that? So it looks like the human eye could be placed on that. I'm going to touch the object. I'm going to leave it the way that I want it. You know what? When I flare that outside edge, I want to have a nice curved line here, so I'm going to come back in and see that indentation there. Yeah. I'm going to go to lattice point, and I'm going to select, deselect these, and then I'm going to scale that out just a teeny bit. So it's a little bit more round shape like that. Touch the shape I have. Edit, delete by type history. Now I have a cool little piece there. See how I made that? fits on the end there. 
to raise that up a teeny bit. I'm going to scale it down a little bit. Get that to fit in there. And then I'm going to come in here. See my little gadgets I have? My little gizmos? My knobs? All right. Um, I'm going to take my knob number one right here. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to do this. I'm going to drop it down right here. I'm going to scale it down a little bit more to about there. I'm going to come in here. I need to extend the vertices down here a little bit more. So I'm going to grab these vertices here. And I'm going to pull these down like so. I can adjust them in a minute. I'm going to come in. I'm going to take this knob piece. And I'm going to fit it. You know, I just had an idea. Something I want to do here. Let's go back. I'm going to extend this shape out here. So if I look at it, there's no subdivisions in here. So I'm going to go ahead and... I'm going to go to back to polygon mode. I'm going to go to edit mesh. I'm going to go to insert edge loop here. I'm going to click on um, one here. Oops. One there, <coughs> one there, put one there, and one here. What I'm going to do then is go to vertices and I'm going to select this row right here. Make sure I have them all selected. So you accidentally selected the inside part, which I don't need, just the outside. <coughs> I'm going to scale them up a little bit, like this. I'm going to select this outer row here. Move that over a little bit, like so. Select this piece here. I'm going to move it back out. I don't even know if I need that piece anymore. I'm just going to get rid of it. What I do like is this piece, though. I'm going to take this guy, duplicate him, put him here, enlarge him. I'm going to make him real thin to make it look like a nice little piece of detail. Like that. There. It's right there. <coughs> a little bit wider, like so. I'm going to duplicate him again. Bring them down to about right there, where that other line is. Scale that down a little bit, like so. <coughs> Let's go to vertices here and grab these vertices. I'm going to move them down. Grab that rim, that little edge of detail right there. I'm going to duplicate that, bring it right over to the edge here. Okay. See, I don't know if I need that shape yet. Slide that back on right here. And then I'm going to go put my knobs in there. So I made like what looks like a little compartment piece, basically. So let's go back and take my knob, scale my knob down just a little bit more. I come in here, I'm going to sort of sink it in right there, line it up, duplicate that, rotate it 90 degrees. I'm going to pull that knob out and put it on the side of the scope, on this side. Okay. So those look like there's some type of adjustments. And then I'll come over here and I'll take the other knob. This might be for a night and day setting or something. Or maybe it's a distance ratio, who knows what. It's a little large, so I'm going to scale it down. I'm going to get it to fit right about there. Okay. Now what I need, I, it doesn't have a base plate. I always like base plates, so I'm going to cheat real quick. So I'm going to cheat. I'm going to take that end, I'm going to duplicate it, scale it down. I'm going to scale it inside itself real quick. A little bit thinner, a little bit thicker. Drop that into the shape right here. Okay. I'm going to grab the rest of the knob. I'm going to bring that down inside itself. And I'm going to grab the vertices here. And I'm going to drop those down so it goes inside the shape. So that might be a little on and off switch for making it day or nighttime or something like that. Okay. So now I look. It's cool. I got my scope, right? Yeah. Let's... Basic shapes. A couple little tweaks here and there. Look at how nice that little form-fitting shape is with those little cuts in there. You know what I mean? That adds a lot to it. Having it supported and mounted, that little protective 
bracket there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here. I still have this extra shape. I don't think I need it right now. I'm going to delete it. So I'm going to go ahead and select this right here. I'm going to group this. I'm going to go into my, and I could clean it up a little bit better, but for right now, I'm just going to, oops, let me do that again, scope, okay. And by cleaning it up better, if I look in here, look, I, it's just all a bunch of parts. I have the knobs, but I could come in here and label some of this and have it identified a little bit better, okay. So um, for right now, though, that's going to work. And what I'm going to do real quick, let's, let's make a cool little mount. It might be like a Picatinny rail. So I'm going to make that really fast here. I'm going to need, um, I'm thinking of, I'm going to make the Picatinny rail first. So I'm going to need a poly shape. And then I'm going to need the mount brackets, which I'm going to use a basic cube and I'm going to bully on to make like a U shape. And then I'm going to make a little screw shape really quick here. So to put in there, if I want for detail. Um, you know what, I had an idea for this too. So I'm going to take this guy here. So I'm going to take these shapes right here. Um, let me see, I think that's all I need right now. I'm going to move them up above here, move them over. So I want to make a really cool mount. Let's start with this shape here. I'm going to make some type of, actually this was the original shape. So I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to come back and do a bully on that. I'm going to make some type of cool um, shape that's, oops, that's on that. I'll show you in a minute what I'm going to do. I can see it in my, my mind, so give me a second here. 40, duplicate. I'm going to make an arc rail, something that has an arc to it. I'm going to do that by doing a boolean on it. So I'm going to take this in like so. <coughs> I'm going to come back to this shape here. I'll get back to that. We'll do the Picatinny rail in just a second. Come in here. I'm going to make the base plate shape, which is going to be just a, a pretty much a base plate. And take this, scale it down, scale it like so. Drop it into this shape right here. Oops. I need to really get a curve out of that, so I want to get this shape basically swallowed up. Something about there like that. That looks cool. I like that. Okay. Um, give me a minute, guys, here. Oh, come on. Go to vertices. There we go. Vertices here. I'm going to bring that down. It's about the halfway point like that. Okay, so this is what I was imagining. I was going to take that shape and I'm going to punch a hole through there too and make another cool little detail to match. So bear with me for one second. I'm going to go back to my original shape here, drop this back down to 20, I'm going <coughs> to duplicate this. I'm going to bring it over here. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. Okay, I'm going to scale it down real fast. I'm going to touch that shape, this shape, and go to Boolean difference. Okay. I'm going to take this shape here. Detail. Guys, little bits of detail can add a lot to your piece. Okay, I'm going to bring that down about there. I'm going to scale it down. Duplicate that. Put it right here. Mesh. Combine. Okay, so that's going to be my little mounting bracket now. That's going to go up and that's going to click on to part of the scope here. And then that's my base plate. So I'm just going to center that base plate over here real quick. I'm going to grab this side of vertices. I'm going to bring them in about there. Grab these. I'm going to bring these in here. And um, <coughs> just so, again, I don't want boxes, right? So I'll just take this box here, I'll center the pivot, move it up a little bit to about there. And then what I'm going to do is grab the vertices here. I'm going to scale them in a little bit like this so I don't get a box anymore. Okay, there. So that's part of my base plate for the front. I'll duplicate that for the back. All right. And then I'm going to make a little bracket and then the Picatinny rail. So here's part of my bracket piece. I'm going to bring this up.
give me a second here, it's going to be really simple. Get that centered about there. Put me a little bit more. Okay. Duplicate, bring, scale this down. Oops, I scale it the wrong way. I'm going to bring it this way. adjust that in just a second <coughs> and then I'm going to make the Picatinny rail real fast so that's the original shape I'm going to come down to subdivisions I believe I'm in subdivisions of width let's put a 12 nope it's got to be height then nope I knew it wouldn't be height it would be depth there it goes 12 I'm going to do a little bit more than 12 let's do about 15 I'm going to make it 20 okay so I'm going to go in here, I'm going to take my face selection, I'm going to select every other face. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Have those selected. I'm going to extrude them, pull them up a little bit, scale one in, scale it off a little bit. That's the base of my Picatinny rail right there. Then I had this idea. Again, what, what do I hate? I hate Cubes, right? Cubes are boring. So why don't I do this? I'm going to also take this side here. There. I'm sort of bummed if I had one more, I could have ended it. Um, so here, I'm going to fix that real quick. Boom. Boom. Edge. Select that edge. Mesh. Fill hole. There we go. Um, now... Just like that face, face, face. Cubes are boring. So I have these faces selected here on that side. Uh oh. Look at what happened, guys. <laughs> I didn't check the other side. I should have checked it, right? Now I got a Command Z, or else I have to start over. There we go. Unselect that guy. Unselect that guy, that guy, that guy. It's very sensitive. It is. It's really annoying. They've changed that. That's why at home I don't have that issue with other versions of Maya. Yeah, Extrude. Bring that up. It's probably a setting for it or preference or something. Yeah, I remember we haven't looked over it yet. <laughs> there, so I have that selected. Now I'm going to go back here. I'm going to select these faces because I'm going to extrude something out. I want it to be even. And I didn't count ahead of time. So select this mesh. Fill hole. Okay, now I'm going to select the other edges here. Boom. 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 Uh-oh. All right. See, something happened there. Give me a minute. Maybe I won't do what I was going to do. I have an issue here. I need to check it real quick. Yeah, gosh darn it. You know what, this face selection thing, I know I need to check. I just out of habit, I don't. But look at what <coughs> happened, guys. I had other faces selected. There. Now I have no other faces selected. I should have checked. Always check in see-through mode. You're going to make the mistake that I just made three times. Okay, extrude. Let's try this again. Let's get these up here. Get these squeezed over. Let's get our Picatinny rail going. Let's come here to take these other faces. Let's take these. Let's delete them. Let's go to edge here. Select this edge. Add a mesh. Fill hole. Okay, there. Now I have that. Looks like it's doing pretty good. All right, now it's coming here. I just thought of putting a little detail on the side. Oh, come on. That piece, please. Face. Face, 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 face. Sorry? One was missing there. Was one? You got one missing. Yep. Right. Thank you, Peter. There we go. That side looking good, right? 
What I'm going to do now is extrude. I'm going to pull them out a little bit like this. I'm going to scale them down a teeny bit and then bring them back down like that. And then what I'm going to do is take the outer vertices and extend them out a little bit and make a little angle on it. I'm just going to line them up like that. Select those vertices there. Come up here, line that up. Select the vertices there, go to scale. Scale them out a little. And then I got that cool little shape like that. Very military-ish. Yeah. Okay, without it, just with what? A simple poly with subdivisions. But that is pretty standard for a lot of military designs. Okay, that piece is a little bit large. I'm going to scale it down right now. Okay. Now I got to get that to fit it. So it's not going to fit it now. I'm going to have to scale this down. So I might get somewhere in the size neighborhood of Let's go back. Touch this piece. Come on, Maya. There it goes. So I want to get that to fit. Sorry. And let me do this real quick. I have so many pieces in here. I'm going to go ahead and touch that little button again here. Not that one. The one with the arrow in it. Where did it go? Oh, there it is. So that way it's a little bit easier to move around. I'm going to get this centered up where I want it. It is. Scale it out a little bit so it can fit where I want it to be. Scale it in a little bit. Get it to sort of drop perfect like right in there. Come over here, drop these vertices down. Right. Bring these to the edge there. Bring those to the edge. There we go. Perfect. Get that to fit in there like so. Yeah, it looks like it's really horizontal. And it looks like it just would clamp on there. Yeah. Okay, once again. What does Phil hate? 90 degree angles. They're boring, right? So I'm just going to take the faces here. I mean, they're just so boring. There's nothing to them. It, it, it really changes the look it of something. Yeah. Oops. Plain. I need to start over there. Extrude. This. Scale it. Rotate it. Bring it down a little. There. That's cool. Much entry. Oh, look at that. I did it opposite. Gosh darn it. Face. Face. Let's try it again, guys. Third time's a charm, right? There it goes. It's doing the opposite. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it like this right now. I'm going to go to the the pivot, use the pivot like this. <coughs> and then I'm just going to use the, the vertice, the scale option. Uh, <laughs> scale it out a little bit like so. Okay, so I got that done. Okay, and now I'm going to come over here. I'm going to get my mount. I grouped it together. And I'm going to do something like this maybe. One there, put one here. Group that together, yeah, center that change over. Change the height, uh, right now, I'm just going to stick it in like that. That's fine. I can worry about it a little bit later. Um, I'm going to group all that together. Group. You know what? And then open it and let's go back and take a look at everything else. That same, that same thing that there. So I'm going to take these.
line that up. All right. Okay, I'm going to bring this over about so. Okay. And see how it, having those angles on it, how it makes it feel very military-ish. Okay, it has an industrial feel to it. Come over here, I'm going to put the negative. Oops, didn't quite work. I'll just do it the other way. Bring it over. <coughs> There it goes. I think I'm a group. You know what? I was going to do two, but I don't think I need to. I'm going to do one. And now I'm realizing what I should have done that into a little bit. <coughs> and ungroup it real quick. I'm hitting my hotkeys and I realize that there's no hotkey because this isn't my computer at home. Okay. Get it right in there. there. And I have a cool little scope mount now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to group this together. I'm going to quickly label it. Even though I should label it with more care, but I'm just, just for the demo here, and I know we've already gone over 30 minutes. I'm going to call it scope mount. Okay. Um, and then I'm just going to sort of take it with a scope here. I'm going to slide it over to put my gun. I do have a concern about how high it is, but I can adjust that later. If there's something I don't like, here's a benefit. Now that it's all grouped, I can grab some of these individual and I could scale them down like this. I could squash them a little bit, maybe put them down like this. Okay. And I can come back into my, my core group here. Scope mount. Oops, I just put a hotkey in there by accident. I'm bringing those down a little bit like so. And, um, Take the scope, bring that down a little bit. Yeah, I like that. Okay, delete that. I can use that again. I thought of using this shape. I like that shape somewhere on the front of my gun. They have a really fun design. I can use that again and again. I can add to it. So, so far, that's the basics of, you know, I, I did the scope. I, I like the water clip idea that I have. I did this little piece here. I would do, need to do more to the main frame of the gun. You know, but when I look at that, that, the one thing I would do to my scope is maybe put the little flip on it. Kids might like that, that it flips up, right? Um, I could also use this again, guys, right? Yeah. I could take it down here. I can inverse it. I want to use my shapes, save myself time. Type in uh, one here. Oops, to say negative one. My bad there. Negative one. I'm going to flip up upside down. And now I could use it. I'm going to make a flashlight. So I'm going to ungroup it real quick. Edit. Ungroup. Right. And keep the, keep the Picatinny rail. Right. Let's ungroup again. Edit ungroup. Okay. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to have a flashlight. I'm not going to need. You know what? Actually, I like. I'm not going to turn. Get rid of that guy. And. I'm going to keep that guy on there, but I'm going to bring him to the other side. <coughs> Flip him. Negative. Okay. So this is a flashlight, right? So I'd, I like that protective shape. I want to see if I could keep that somehow. I wonder if I squash it, what happens to it. That's pretty cool. I'm going to bring that over there. Remember I said I like that shape up here? Now I'm going to use it. Could, that can make a really interesting flashlight shape. Bring it down here. Let me center on. Yeah, it fits pretty good like that. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to bring this in here. Make it a little bit wider, let's say. And squash it together a little bit more. Like this. 
I don't need the nozzle piece. I can delete that. I'm going to take the little knob piece. I'm going to put it right in the base here. Stay like that. All right. Uh, I want to change a little bit of what's happening here. So since it's a flashlight, I think I'm going to go ahead and make this end piece a little bit larger. So I'm going to select this right here. I'm going to go to scale. Scale this up. Bring it back a little bit. Okay. And you'll notice um, since I did that, that's not fitting in there. So I'm going to delete. Oops. I'm going to delete that piece. I don't think I need that. I'm going to take this, drop it back inside, make it a little bit larger. And I'm going to try to see if this will work. Just to make it look like it's some ruggedized flashlight. Let me see how many faces I have here, if I can do this. One, two, space, one, two, space, one, two. No, oh, I wouldn't make it. I have. So let's see, let's see if I can. Let's do one each. Yeah, that'll work, right? I'm going to extrude those shapes, bring them out a little bit, scale them in. So now it looks like a little piece of rubber, right? <laughs> With little knobs on it, okay? Click off of it, and now I'm going to select this. I'm going to regroup it. And that's my flashlight now. So I use the same piece of geometry that I had, but this time I'm going to rotate it a little bit. Aha! I'm going to get it up and mount it like on its side. Sort of like that. Okay? So it's going to be, and it's still pretty large, so I'm going to scale it down maybe a little bit more like that. There we go. And I'm going to use this piece here. I'm going to go to vertices. I'm going to go look through it. I'm going to take this half of the vertice, and I'm just going to stretch it like that. I'll make it look like it's a mount plate for my little flashlight. <coughs> okay. There. See that? And actually, I'm going to bring them in a little bit more. A little bit to there. Bring those vertices a little bit. Oops. Why is it doing that? It's interacting. That's so funny. There it goes. You know what? I'm going to do this. I'm going to round off by using the scale tool. You see that? Put a nice little round edge on there. I'm going to come back to this other side. I'm going to do that too. I'm going to round that off. And I just have that one little line in the middle, which I'll move into the middle here. Okay. And you know what? If I'm worried. Yeah, it's just going straight across, so that's fine. There. So now I'm going to select those, all those, that and that. I'm going to group it and call that my flashlight. Okay, so I'm reusing my parts here. It looks a little different than my scope, doesn't it? It's a different size. It's rotated at an angle. I changed a couple pieces. I changed that end piece. But it looks like it would be a cool little flashlight. So if I came back in here and I did a little bit more work on the base in here, I'd probably adjust this piece a little bit. It's starting to feel a little too heavy and important. I don't want it to feel too important. Um, I need to figure out how the rest of these pieces connect, which I could do later. I could spend more time on the design, but for right now, for the demo, that's enough to, to give you an idea that I started with base primitives and I just kept modifying it and modifying it. So you can see um, when you hear me sense a little bit of frustration with students about if you just give me simple poly primitives, it tells me that you're not spending enough time on it because it's easy to get out of poly primitives. <coughs> it just takes a little bit of practice. <coughs> Okay, and I would keep coming in and modifying this. I, one thing I notice right now in terms of just overall design sensibilities is it's really skinny in here. I'd, I'd probably take this, I want a nice chunky body piece to it. So I might extend this back a little bit. I might bring some of this back into here. Actually, I'm sort of curious now, what if I do this? Adds a little bit more. This is where now I'd go take a look at my reference and decide what other, you know, 
I'd look at the reference and, and gather my next stepping stone to move forward on my design. Okay? But that's, you know, for right now, look at what we've done. Look at how much detail. Look at how interesting it feels. Again, look at segmented detail. Areas of detail, large open shapes. Areas of detail, open shapes. You know, um, and we, this is what we started with, guys. We were over here. Okay? The simple shapes, but that simple shapes gave me a stepping platform to move forward. Okay? So let me end this lecture really quick. I'll be back in a second.